YouTube. This is Mahadeva the Thunder Wizard. And I just finished my second CE5 protocols. My solo. Um, and I am... I'm kind of freaked out. <laughs> and I'm, I'm trying to... Um, calm myself down and uh, yeah so um, I want to make sure that I, I I wish that I had come in as soon as it happened and talked about it but I needed to just do some um, you know uh, random things like you know take out the trash and uh, you know just do little odds and ends around the house just so that I could <laughs> you know, get some routine going and feel comfortable again. <laughs> um, but it's definitely a progression from last time. So um, I have, you know, I tried to do it, as you remember, uh, not, I did it the first time on the 4th of June, and then I did it, uh, I don't know how long ago it was, a few days ago, I think. And um, it was really mosquito-y, and I couldn't meditate because I was, you know, getting bitten by mosquitoes, and so uh, nothing happened there, as far as I know. I didn't get any footage. I didn't get any audio. Uh, my I had other stuff. I had a, my radio, and I had um, a tri-field magnetometer with me, which, as I understand it, sometimes the, the ETs can take over whatever your electronics are and do all kinds of stuff. And um, so I had more stuff and I had a uh, digital camera and nothing happened. Uh, I was disappointed, I won't lie to you, I was disappointed and I started wondering, well maybe, maybe I just imagined it the first time. And um, so anyway, tonight I did it again. This time I stayed home and um, I was out in my Florida room, and um, what I did was I practiced uh, the protocols that I gave you to do on uh, June 4th, which was I did um, whatever Maoshan Lightning Qigong practice you do. I did mine, which is this. I did the five element, and I did uh, the other Maoshan spirit fighting. Got myself juiced up and then uh, you know I went out and I had everything set up and I turned on my uh, my uh, my night vision video camera and I had my radio with me and my magnetometer and I had a digital you know EVP recorder and I had that all set up and everything was going and um, it was very similar to the last time. I did the three ones meditation, which I love, very empowering. And then um, I did my best. I got to tell you, I'm not good at visualization. I'm not good at it. You know, there are some people that are much better at it than I am, I'm assuming. You know, and so it's a little daunting when I read Dr. Stephen Greer or listen to him when he says, you know, you have to really see it, you know, not just imagine it. And, um, you know, my experience is that I don't, um, I don't have a full, you know, I, I have had um, very lucid dreams and I have had out of body experiences and all that. And those are very real. But when I'm, you know, trying to do the, the vectoring, I don't, to be honest, I don't feel it all that much and I I have to talk myself through it in my head and I can see but it's like you know seeing things very it's not totally lucid and to me it doesn't seem like what people would call you know um, remote viewing which is another way of saying you know an actual psychic vision so I did that and um, but what does happen is I get very excited like I get very emotionally excited and I was emotionally excited all day because I kind of knew that I was going to 
do it and I waited until um, you know just around sunset before I made the decision that okay I'm going to do my solo CE5 and I'm going to do it here and I'm going to do it in my controlled conditions so that I can you know feel more powerful and feel safe and um, so same thing as before I did the meditation and uh, you know again I'm not really good at like visualizing earth and going you know I I, I can sort of see the uh, the Milky Way galaxy and then and then I just sort of like it, it feels to me like I'm just out there screaming you know <laughs> and I'm really excited and hey I love everybody and come see me and hi my name is Mike and I'm from Earth and is anybody out there and I had this feeling you know that there was this red ship and again it was just a feeling so again I I guess I'm learning it must have been accurate because I saw this red ship and um, I asked could I come inside and you know I, I you know I realized that I'm if if I'm actually out there I'm you know it's my astral body and so I imagined myself going inside the ship and I was wanting to know who was in there and they looked I mean I, again it wasn't very clear crystal clear, but it felt to me like what I saw was um, some kind of red, yeah, it was a red ship. Um, and I'm just realizing now, I didn't realize it, that uh, the Close Encounters of the Fifth Kind, there's a red, a red, uh, yeah, oh, I, I didn't even make that conclusion. Because it seems strange to me, I'm like red, that seems pretty intense. Um, but there was a, a red ship and there were these, they looked like uh, praying mantis type, you know, and again, very dimly, I couldn't tell, but that was the feeling, very long, skinny arms and, you know, definitely not human by any stretch of the imagination. And the top of my crown right now is, is, you know, it feels like somebody's tapping on it. And I've been having that since the experience began. So I, I went in there and I said, hey, you know, let me take you to my planet. Let me take you to Earth. And, and I, you know, tried to vector them back to Earth and then, you know, came back to myself and... Uh, did the normal stuff, played the Fibonacci tones and with my radio and put it out there and then, you know, went back and, okay, I'm supposed to do this again. So I went into meditation and I went back out there. And um, this time, uh, the feeling I had when I got there was that the red ship was like making its way and it was swirling around me. Like it was really happy to see me and it was you know, it was swirling around me and I was like, can I show you? And they're like, no, we know where you're talking about. And that, again, these were all feelings. And uh, so I vectored myself back. And then, I, you know, I, I thought about, should I keep meditating? But I was tired in terms of my, like the meditation magic seemed to be gone. So I stayed uh, where I was and I just sort of sat around and fiddled with things. I don't know. Uh, when I'm feeling, when I'm not freaked out, I'll look at the, the footage, and um, and again, it was about the same. It was about an hour, about an hour and a half later, you know. As I, you know, by this time I'm lying on the. Oh, before that, sorry, before that, I, I guess after the second time when I came back. Now I'm remembering. I started feeling a very. Intense isn't the right word because I could have talked myself out of it, but I started feeling an intense pressure in my heart. There was at one point where I felt like some pressure in my ears and um, like like tinnitus, tinnitus in my ears started, you know, that kind of stuff. But again, it, it's at that level where, you know, it doesn't, it, it's not totally crazy weird, but the feeling in my heart was pretty intense. And um, and I turned and I looked at the camera. Oh, it's right there on the 
tripod. I turned and looked at the camera so that I would have it recorded at that time. And I went like this and I said, I'm, you know, like trying to show the camera that I'm feeling something really intense. And I took the phone up so I could see what time it was on uh, and have it recorded. But then nothing, right? So didn't know what to think about that sort of, what do I do? Do I meditate? And so I tried just meditating and, and, um, you know, going, going within. I did that. That was also part of it, going within. And instead of going out into the universe, I went within and said, I'm going to find, because inside of my heart is infinity. So everything is inside of my heart. So I went in there. And then, um, you know, same kind of thing happened as last time. You kind of feel like, well, I don't know if anything's going to happen tonight. I'm feeling kind of, you know. So I got my... Fibonacci tones and the radio and I just blasted and I you know transmitted that for probably you know 30 seconds or whatever and I it, the way that I remember it when I look at the footage I'll know but the way that I remember it was um, pretty much just a few seconds after I stopped doing that the radio started going off like the 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 static sound like a lot and it seemed like it was a it was an escalation because the first time that I that that happened it was just once and then um you saw in the video um it was then followed by the Fibonacci tones, which I didn't hear at the time, but I don't know how that happened. It went, you know, squelch and then Fibonacci tones. And um, that seemed to me like a pretty clear indication. Hey, it's us. The guys that you were, you know, were here. So this time the, the radio is going. It's like just, it, it is very clear that it's not just one little little squelch tone that comes through. It's like going off continuously. And I'm flipping out. And I'm really scared because I don't know, you know, it's just, it's one thing to think about it. And it's another thing when it happens. And it's just weird and intense and frightening. But what I'll say is that this, this entire experience, when I'm doing it, when I'm uh, thinking about it when when I'm actually um, I completely forgot what I was going to say. Um, anyway, maybe it'll come to me again. That's that's how kind of uh, freaked out I am right now. So the radio was was going off, and uh, I was very emotional. And um, you know, I was like, I don't know what to do. What do I do now? What do I do? And the radio is still continuously going off. And so I don't know if it was my idea or if it was their idea. But I got this feeling, let's go outside and talk. Because it would, I wanted to get out. I didn't want it in my house. I didn't, you know, I, did, I didn't want strange beings in my home. This is my home. You know, I, I'm, I'm working to get past that. But for right now... You know, this is my home. Um, you can be in the Florida room. So I needed to get get away from my house, like draw it away from my house. That was the feeling. And so the, the feeling I got was they were like, hey, you're, you'll be more comfortable away. Let's, let's take a walk. So I did. So I took my radio, which was going off. And um, I took my uh, EVP recorder. And we'll see what comes from that. And um, I'm very emotional. Oh, I was going to say that as I start looking at this, I have a lot of unconscious resistance about this. And it has to do with not feeling worthy. Like in my mind, these beings represent uh, the elves. Whether they are or not, I don't know. But that's what they represent to me now. They represent... Uh, high level ascended masters beings of light and so I have a really strong you know psychological feeling of need for them to love me and approve of me and accept me and you know and 
So a lot of old family stuff comes up, especially stuff my older brother. My older brother, you know, was very dismissive and abusive of me. And so I found myself feeling, every time that I get ready to do CE5 or look into it, I start feeling personally very unworthy. You know, I'm, they're going to find out I'm a fraud, I'm no good, I'm, you know, all that kind of stuff. And I was aware of that today uh, as I was getting ready to do it. In fact, I tr I, I, it almost talked me out of doing it. And I said, no, I am nervous and I am excited and that is a good sign. It means I'm pushing past my issues. And I did a room reading. I did a room reading about, uh, you know, what could I expect from a uh, CE5 today. and. One of the runes, one of the most prominent runes that was in the north that says here's what's coming as a result was the Yuhuaj rune, which is, you know, the rune of transformation, like dynamic, intense transformation. And um, so, so I walked out of my Florida room and the radio is still going off, right? And then I'm outside and I'm looking up at the moon and the stars and I'm like, are you guys out here? And then I was, you know, I was like emotional and I started getting, um, you know, like almost weepy. And, um, and the radio had turned itself off by then. It wasn't squelching anymore. And I said, uh, I'm afraid to say it now because I don't want anything to happen. But I said, uh, uh, I, I have a lot of emotions were coming up and I said, I feel unworthy, meaning I feel unworthy of contact with you. And I said, I need some confirmation that I'm worthy. And the radio goes nuts. <laughs> like nuts for not just a little bit for, it had to have been minutes. And I'm like, okay, okay, oh, I'm freaking out, I'm freaking out. And I, so I walk out to the, to the street, and it's still going off, and I'm turning it down so in case it's too loud, and it's going off, and it's continuously going off. And, um, and now I'm putting it together. There's something happened now, I'm putting it together. And um, so I'm doing my best to stick with it, because I'm, I'm flipped at this point. I'm flipping out. And um, I get, you know, to, you know, I turn, I get to the end of my street and I turn down the street and I'm on the sidewalk and it's safe because there's all these, you know, street lights and everything like that. And again, nothing else is happening. And the radio um, is, I don't know what's happening because it's really intense and I'm trying to stay with it and I'm talking as though they're there, you know, like, what do we do? How do, how do I do this? Here's what... The feeling, then I got the feeling of what is it that you want, and I don't even know what I said. I, it was some deep emotional stuff. I got it recorded. I can go listen to it later. Maybe I'll share it with you. And, um, and uh, then the radio, when I get to a certain part on the sidewalk, the radio goes nuts again. And this time it feels like it's, they're saying, okay, that's it. Hey, thanks. It was good seeing you. You know, it was like a goodbye. It was very intense. And again, you know, this is so different from the first time where it was just the one little we're here and then the little sort of signs on the video and on the audio that maybe something happened. This time the radio is just absolutely gone berserk. And um, so uh, it happened at a certain point uh, on the sidewalk. And so um, it ended. Now, I didn't know that that was going to be the end because there had been little breaks in between. And um, so I, uh, you know, kept talking and kept uh, voicing my feelings and it sort of everything seemed to be coming up. By the way, the whole time this happens since I get up and I go out 
uh, outside and the radio is going nuts, it feels like there's a finger not like a f human finger, but there's something on my on my crown chakra, right, right smack dab on the crown. So much so that uh, I think it's a bug. And at one point, I think you know a moth actually was flying around there, and I think I brushed the moth off. And um, but then the whole time it felt like there was you know somebody was just lightly tapping me on the crown chakra the whole time. And so when that was all done and it seemed like everything was over, I turned around and I started walking back to my house. And I'm looking down on the sidewalk. And I kid you not, now I'm realizing what was happening, why the radio was going nuts at that point because it was a sign. And I looked down on the sidewalk and I kid you not, it looks like somebody with red spray paint which may have done, maybe a worker did it. I don't know where it came from. It was so incredibly uh, um, coincidental. I mean, if I go out there tomorrow and there's nothing on the sidewalk, I'll be flipped out, but I'm pretty sure there was. But I see in, you know, just in what looks like red spray paint, I see a yuhuaj room in red. I'm like, wow, that's trippy, you know, and then I, of course, I tell myself, well, it must be some workers are going to do something or whatever, and then I go a little bit further, and there's a second one, and then I see another one, and I'm like, wait a minute, and I, as I get to, I realize I've seen a few of them, and then there's no more after that. I turn around, and I walk back, and I count it, and there was five, five Yuhuaj runes spray-painted right where I was where I stopped walking. When I stopped walking and turn around, uh, unless I'm, you know, not looking down, there are five u wash runes uh, on the sidewalk. And uh, all the time I'm feeling this, you know, like this finger. And in my mind I see this really long finger. I, I have no idea if I'm making that up or not. Um... But it definitely didn't feel human. It definitely was very, very direct and very intense, very concentrated. The feeling that I have is that this being or these beings were just so concentrated, like the energy is just very intense. And, uh, you know, that red color definitely has that feeling of red and the red yuhuaj rune and all of that. And now that I'm thinking about it here, I didn't realize it, but see the guy on the left, he's red. And he's definitely doesn't look altogether all that human. I, I don't know. The feeling I had was they, you know, they were sort of like... Uh, um, praying mantis feeling that's how they looked I don't know that was all just in my imagination I have no idea if I'm if that's just my own imagination or if that's what was really going on and then there was nothing else happened after that and I came back home and I sat down and I made sure you know kept everything on and I you know still kind of freaked out but definitely was ready for things to be over it was an intense, frightening experience. <laughs> I was ready for it to be done. And it um, seems like it was. And um, then I, you know, I, I meditated a little bit, did a little Qigong to sort of, you know, bring myself back into my body and make myself comfortable. And then I started gathering things up and then I took the garbage out and I did stuff like that. I, I wanted to come and talk to you guys immediately, but I, I just... I needed to do some routine stuff just to, you know, not be so freaked out. And the thing about it, it, you know, it would be freaky if this was like, you know, if I was doing some ghost hunting. And But, you know, ghosts, what they do is they, they take over things and they don't, there's no rhyme or reason to it. 
and they do it to scare you and to you know it, it's just this it's just like this it, it's a temper tantrum if they you know the lights and all that kind of stuff that's not what this was the feeling I definitely got uh, despite the fact that things that there was a paranormal aspect to it the feeling I got was that these are physical beings that if they're not if they weren't physically there with me you know um, in ways that I couldn't see then they were projecting themselves using their uh, their spiritual abilities and whatever technology perhaps but that was the feeling I got, that these are physical beings and they were physically somewhere. Even though they had the ability to, to whatever it is, you know, this, whatever all the things that they were doing. Again, I'm not, I'm not, I don't plan on getting up tomorrow and pouring over the, the uh, footage. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to need to, you know, I'm going to need some time to cool off from all this. So it was just, a, it was a lot. And, um, but the feeling I got is that they're deaf. I mean, you think about it, you know, um, I, I send out the call and it takes them about an hour to show up. So, I mean, I don't know what that's about. Maybe they show up earlier than that and then they finally let you know because you can't see them. Maybe they're hoping that you'll sense them. But the, you know, then they have to do the the you know the mundane stuff of you know messing with your with your radio. Anyway, so uh, I can't I can't shake the feeling of the red the red entities and and their red ship. Their ship was bright red, bright red light. That's what I saw. When not physically, when I was meditating. So I think I'm in for some transformation. I'll keep, uh, you know, I, me and the Yuhuaj rune. You know, the Yuhuaj rune is is not my first choice of an experience. But here's the reality of it. One of the things that I have wanted, and one of the things I asked for, was I really want my view of reality expanded because it's just there's a part of me that it's just it's so weird it's just so you know it's one thing to think about it it's another thing to accept as a reality that there are beings out there that live on other planets that also live in other dimensions and it just again I, it's hard it, it's hard for me to get my mind around that through meditation physical beings will travel millions of light years to come see you i guess i still haven't you know uh, fully grasped the profundity of the fact that i must have traveled millions of light years I mean, if I, you know, looking back on the fact that I was looking, you know, to, in order to be looking at the Milky Way, I mean, I must be ex very far away. So uh, I don't know where, I'm, I don't know where in the universe I was, but I, I guess it's, it, it's as equally weird that I can make it out there. But that... <laughs> Anyway, the whole thing is just is just so beyond our our paradigm. My, my paradigm is coming apart, and I've been having dreams. You know, they haven't been shamanic dreams or lucid dreams, but they've been dreams where uh, my view of the universe is coming apart, and. Not in a good way or a bad way, but, you know, a little bit strange. But that's what I want. I, I really want, you know, what I want more than anything is to know the truth. I want to know the truth of my physical and my spiritual existence. 
And now we finally found a merging of the two where spiritual uh, meditative powers actually have very real physical results. And, uh, I, you know, I don't know what, what happens in these scenarios. You know, I, I know physically what happened is my radio did things it wasn't supposed to do. There was a coincidence where I saw five Yuhuaj runes in a row, exactly at the point where the radio went the craziest and then stopped. Um, that the only time that my radio has ever done that has been times when I've meditated and asked beings from other planets to come and visit me. It's the only time that's ever happened. That's, those are the facts. But underneath it, there's something else going on. You know, what have I, what have I, what process have I started? That's what I'm wondering. What transformation experience have I just unleashed on myself? That's what, where, who were these beings? What were they? Who were they? Where were they from? Why is it so frightening? So incredibly frightening. One of the things that I realized is, I think if I keep doing this, I'm going to do it with other people. Because I can't escape the feeling that this is a very real thing. I also got some kind of a feeling out of all this that you know, things were pretty serious. Maybe that was me. Maybe that's just my feeling, but I remember saying that. You know, the earth is going through some serious stuff. We need a lot of help. Anyway, I'm starting to babble, but um, I wanted to uh, I wanted to get it get it out. As you can tell, I'm having a hard time staying with it. Like I'm really just wanting to just like zone out and you know, it's 12.30 at night and I just want to, you know, get back to normal, safe 3D for a while. So I will. But anyway, uh, I thought I would get it all out, at least the way I remember it and share it with you guys. And I will keep you informed. I, I, I want to know if this red ship with these uh, beings... I think they were red in color, and I think they were like, um, as I said, praying mantis type. And that they're not exactly like that. They didn't have big eyes, and you know, but that feel had that kind of a feeling. I'm wondering if that's the same beings that I guess I don't know. The first time it felt like a feminine. I don't know, maybe it was a different one. I don't know. But they definitely, whoever it was, definitely had no problem making a ton of noise on my radio. <laughs> no problem whatsoever. Um, and uh, confirming. You know, there was one point where I, I specifically asked for a confirmation. And uh, I got it. Like, uh, undeniably. <laughs> so... Um, anyway, that's it for me. Uh, I'm think I'm gonna eat some food and I don't know. Maybe I'll cry a little bit or something. I, 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 <laughs> I shake this all off. I'll do my mantra before bed. All right, that's it, guys. Uh, I'll uh, obviously we'll, we got something to talk about. All right, talk to you guys soon.